2018 is a bonding year at the legislature, and the state has received about $3.5 billion in requests. The Senate Capital Investments Committee recently finished touring the state for an up-close look at some of the projects. Joining me in the studio is the chair of the Capital Investments Committee, Senator David Senjum. Welcome. It's good to be here, Shannon. You just completed an extensive tour of the state. Were you overwhelmed by the over 100, well over 100 requests that you looked at? Well, perhaps overwhelming isn't, uh, isn't perhaps the word because we're, we're getting used to it, unfortunately, as the case might be. But uh, uh, yes, we saw, we saw a lot of needs out there. There's no question out. We were out for 12 days, uh, uh, fairly long days, 7.30 in the morning till usually 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. Uh, That's a long day. And uh, seeing uh, as much as we could in a compressed sort of way. We tried, given the, the, the budget situation in the legislature, we really tried to compress it and uh, in many cases make, uh, make uh, a three-day trip normally into two days and so on and so forth. So. Uh, we were fairly intensive, but that's good. Uh, efficiency is fine. <laughs> the request came for infrastructure upgrades, asset preservation, wastewater treatment, and transportation projects. Did you see any that are just an absolute slam dunk in terms of need? Well, uh, sure. We uh, well, in, in terms of wastewater, especially, and we'll probably talk a lot about this in the next couple of minutes. But it is we have we have just grave concerns and. Uh, and terribly uh, difficult situations all over Minnesota respect to, to wastewater. Uh, uh, one little city, Waldorf, Minnesota, for instance, comes to mind. Uh, they are they are they are in the sort of almost a crash mode there in terms of uh, their system is uh, completely outdated, nearly not functional. Uh, and what it, what does this little community do? They they've got a very very limited tax base and so on and so forth but that's repeated on and on and on as you as you talk to cities all across minnesota we've got old systems and they're they're antiquated they're worn out in many cases they've crumbled literally pipes within the grounds have crumbled and uh, they just don't have the wherewithal to to carry on well another city i wanted to bring up since we're talking about wastewater uh -huh. is the city of Wyndham, which is i think 4600 sure, in population right. southwest minnesota they have businesses that want to locate there, but their wastewater treatment system cannot accommodate the growth, the economic growth. So right. as you mentioned, this is happening across the state. Will these places that can't grow or can't even get up to code, will there be some priority for places like that that yeah, really have I, I that need? I think so. Uh, we, did, we did stop in Wyndham, as for instance, they, they have a situation there where they've got some opportunities economically. and. Uh, and I think you know we want we want to plug into those. Not not to say we don't want to take care of you know some of these others as well that don't have those opportunities. But but certainly where opportunities exist, we need to plug into them and try to make something work for those communities because uh, we want jobs, we want growth, and uh, and if we can uh, apply the bonding bill in, in, in that direction, you know, all the better. The governor last month released his one and a half billion dollar bonding proposal and you released a statement shortly after that says his proposal quote busts the budget but you also indicated a willingness to invest in infrastructure as sure. though the governor's I think sure. was pointed more towards yeah. higher education yeah. but but and also transportation issues. Is there at this point any agreement between you and the governor well, in terms of bonding? Gov governor and I haven't talked uh, I'm not sure if he's talked to Representative Rudall or not but uh, we have not talked, but that, that's, that's not to say that we would have perhaps anyway. Uh, uh, the governor proposes uh, we go out and look at these projects and, if you will, dispose in terms of putting bills together. Uh, there'll be a point in time in this whole process where we'll uh, come together and we'll have some conversations about, uh, you know, his specific interests and, uh, and certainly uh, our bill at that point in time. And uh, this, is a, this is the art of compromise and we'll I think we'll find the end, and it, it will be just fine. Uh, I'm not terribly worried about where we are now in terms of conversation. We've got yet to put our bill together. Uh, do you imagine that there's going to be an effort to spread the bonding dollars evenly across geographic areas? Oh, sure. We, we always uh, attempt to do that. The, the bonding bill is not only certainly uh, has, to, has to be geographic in nature because uh, every taxpayer in Minnesota uh, pays a portion to, 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 to the whole bonding process, uh, literally, in terms of accepting that debt and, and paying that debt off. So we, we need to be fair about this in terms of geography. We also certainly uh, need to be fair about it in terms of bipartisanship. Uh, uh, we, we cannot, we in the Senate Republican Caucus, cannot pass a bonding bill. We need 41 votes. And so 
that's recognized. That's the that's the Constitution of the state of Minnesota. So, so you know, we work together on this. Perhaps more than any other committee, we work together in terms of trying to find that that bill that will work for all of us. In last year's bonding bill, uh, there was a significant amount of investment in transportation projects. Do you expect that to continue this year, or would this simply be? infrastructure and capital investments with no, little transportation. We'll, we'll await in the con uh, transportation as, as well and the governor will have to decide whether or not he wants to keep it in. He's again we propose uh, he with his line item veto can dispose but uh, the the, uh, the you know situations like Highway 14 I mean how, how many years have we talked about that. Uh, uh, almost certainly I can tell you that will be in our bill. I, I, I would be surprised myself if it wasn't. Uh, uh, we've got Highway 10 moving through Wadena. Uh, mm -hmm. They need some help. Senator Gazelka mentioned yeah, that one. And, yes. and so we have just all kind, you know, and situation after situation where we've got, uh, if you will, pinch points or, or situations that uh, I think everybody knows they're, they're hazardous, and uh, we don't seem to be able to get them done, if you will, a normal way. So let's at least uh, uh, attempt to do it through the, the capital investment process. Uh, so yes, there will be transportation in this bill. One last question. Um, I've heard from the governor and from the DFL caucus about the importance of asset preservation and actually the Speaker of the House also talked about asset preservation. Sure. It's not an exciting way to spend money on tuck pointing and you know keeping the buildings standing but Senator Bach mentioned the possibility of creating a separate bonding bill for preserving the state's assets. What are your thoughts on maybe two bonding bills, one for wastewater transportation, that kind of infrastructure and another simply for asset preservation? It, uh it, 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 it's sort of a novel idea, and actually we considered it back, you know, 2011 or 12, one of those years uh, uh, when I was previously chairman, uh, to, to do that. Uh, it, uh, there's, there's, there's something about bonding, you know, everybody, everybody could agree on asset preservation, no, no question about it, you know. And, and, and by the way, we've got uh, 54 Minsky facilities, five University of Minnesota campuses, uh, we've got 2,700 DNR buildings, I'm not sure how many DOT buildings, but on and on and on. We have we have loads and loads of infrastructure, all of which to some degree usually needs some level of attention. So infrastructure is certainly going to be big in the bonding bill. Uh, there are also other, other projects that are important to individual members that are beyond infrastructure. And so you have to craft this thing so that uh, in some cases uh, uh, an important project for a, a specific member, maybe not so important for anybody else, is uh, is able to be in that building. Now if we, if we put all of those personally interesting bills in, in one bill, uh, more than likely it would it would crash and crumble and we'd get nowhere. So, so uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's, two it's is an, an interesting option. idea, yeah. but I, I just don't think it, it works in the, in the world we work in. <laughs> Senator Senjum, it's always a pleasure. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much.